From 1878 to 1968, there were 71 lake captains that called Bayview, Wisconsin, on the shore of Lake Michigan, their home. While they lived here, they captained 195 different ships, from tugboats to schooners to steamships, in voyages that took them to every one of the Great Lakes. Join us now for another episode of Bayview, Town of Lake Captains, where we explore not only these captains, but also their ships, their homes, their families, and their lifetime of sailing adventures on the Great Lakes. You may recognize this part of East Lincoln Avenue. Directly behind me, in the vacant space, the empty lot. There was, a once, a, there was once a house there, and the captain that lived there lived in many houses in Bayview. But that's the most significant one, in my opinion. And in fact, at the time of his most famous sea adventure takes place, he had just left after 25 years. It happened six months later. And what happened later is, his ship collided in the Detroit River at 2 in the morning with another ship captained by another Bayview Lake captain. This captain's ship sank. There was a dog aboard, the dog mascot. At the time of the collision, the dog ran around and woke everybody up, and they all got out, except for the dog. I want to do a sculpture for the dog to remember him, right here on East Lincoln, and I'll show you that location where that will go soon. We're raising money for it. If you want to contribute, look at the end screen and you'll see, and also on our website, and you'll see places that you can donate. We're not tax deductible though, so it's more of a contribution than a donation. You can't deduct it on, deduct it on your taxes. The captain to live here, his name was Stephen Brownell, and his nickname was Boney. We don't know what he looked like, but he was one of four. Brownell brothers that were all ship captains, a common occurrence in Bayview. Three of those lived in Bayview. He lived in the most houses of any lake captain. He's one of many that lived here on East Lincoln Avenue, which was ship captain's row in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. And I'm honored to have brought you that story. Remember, the historic Bayview Lake Captain Society has sponsored this video. Membership is free. You're welcome to look in any time. And that's basically your subscription. To show an interest, watch the YouTube videos, look at the website, sign up for our newsletter. It's all free, and it's here for you. So I hope you enjoy this uh, uh, very interesting bit of Bayview history, as all these lake captains are. And remember, and I'll see you next time, and then remember, Hats off to all our Bayview Lake Captains. Bye-bye. Welcome to another installment of Bayview, Town of Lake Captains, where we discuss the lives of the 71 different lake captains that once lived in Bayview, Wisconsin, during the late 19th and early 20th centuries, in the age of sail and steam. This discussion will include their ships, their homes, their families, and their lifetime of sailing adventures on the Great Lakes. Here is the map of Lake Captain's homes in Bayview, to show you where this episode takes place. Its location focuses primarily on the large green arrow. Today we will be discussing the life of Captain Stephen Brownell, 
who lived in an incredible ten different houses over a quarter of a century in Bayview, and who also had two hair-raising adventures out on the Great Lakes, in which he was lucky to escape with his life. He is one of only two Bayview Lake captains, known to have been rescued from his ship by the famous Breeches Buoy, used by the United States Life-Saving Service to bring stranded sailors on ships in danger safely to shore. His second adventure forms the basis for the inclusion of a sculpture, with the proposed historic marker showing the names, addresses, and ships captained of Bayview's seventy-one lake captains, near the area of highest concentration of captains, the intersection of East Lincoln, Kinnikinnick, and Howell Avenues in Bayview. Captain Stephen O. Boney Brownell was born in Ontario, Canada, in 1859. His father was born in Pennsylvania, and his mother in Ireland. They had ten children, five boys and five girls. Stephen immigrated at age 32 through Detroit in April 1873, eventually becoming a naturalized citizen of the U.S. on 11th of March 1891. Stephen and three brothers would all become lake captains, two of them, Edward and Joseph, settling in Bayview. Their biographies will be in future episodes on this channel. Another lake captain brother, David, lived on Bayview's Mound Street in 1909-10, to but is only confirmed at the time as a sailor and not a captain, though the author thinks it's highly probable he too was a Bayview lake captain, See David discussed in a future episode titled Honourable Mention. There was also a fifth Brownell brother, William, but, unlike the other four, he did not pursue a maritime career. Stephen's whereabouts from his immigration in 1873 to his arrival in Bayview in 1892, some nineteen years later, are unknown. However, Given that brothers Edward and William started out in Chicago, it's likely Stephen did as well, moving to Bayview later. The Brownell brothers were but one of many sets of brothers that became Bayview Lake captains. A future episode on this channel will be devoted to all of these brothers. After Stephen arrived in Bayview in 1892, at age 33, he would remain living in Bayview for the next twenty-four years, before departing for Walker Street in Walker's Point in 1915, just three years before his death in 1918. While living in Bayview, he lived in a total of ten different homes, nine of which while a lake captain, often sharing space with his brothers Joseph, Edward and David and their families. Captain Stephen Brownell is also documented to have captained at least three different ships while living in Bayview. These are 1898 to 1906, ship or ships captained unknown, however, in 1901 was second mate on the car ferry Pere Marquette No. 16. 1907 to 08, captain of the steamship Hennepin, and 1909 to 16, captain of the steamship Topeka. Also of interest is that his younger brother Joseph would also become captain of the Hennepin just two years after Stephen was its captain from 1907 to 08. During this time he also acquired the nickname Boney, its origination and reason unknown. Stephen's eight different homes in Bayview while he was captain, he lived in two others previously but wasn't a captain yet, are as follows with the ships shown that he captained while living there. 2246 South Mound Street, 1902-06. Captain, ship unknown. 832 East Homer Street, 1906. Captain, ship unknown. 2203 South Winchester Street, 1907. Captain of the Hennepin, since torn down. 2904 South Mabbit Avenue, 1907. Captain of the Hennepin. 2254 
South Alice Street, 1908, Captain of the Hennepin. 2255 South Mound Street, 1908-09, Captain of the Hennepin and Topeka. 447 East Lincoln Avenue, 1909-11, Captain of the Topeka. 2870 South Delaware Avenue, 1912-14, Captain of the Topeka. Of these ships and homes, we're going to next discuss two that had an especially significant impact on Stephen Brownell's life and were his most important sailing adventures while living in Bay View. The first adventure occurred on 22nd December 1901, when Brownell, second officer of the pair Marquette No. 16, was rescued from this sinking ship by the U.S. Life Saving Service's legendary Breaches Buoy. The ship became stranded, attempting to enter port at Ludington, Michigan, during a huge gale, and was damaged significantly. It was in great danger of sinking. At the time, Brownell was living at 515 East Ocean Street in Bayview, with his wife and several young children. The Breaches Buoy was a rescue system used by the U.S. Life Saving Service in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. If a ship became stranded close to shore, this system was designed to get the crew safely to the beach by staying above and out of the water. The waves and undertow current made it impossible for any sailor to make it to shore in the water. This slide and the next show this system, but you might want to pause each for a second or two to read the detailed explanations next to them. The way the breech's buoy worked was this. First, a rope line would be literally shot out of a small cannon on the shore, called a lyle gun, out to the ship. Second, the crew would then take that line and tie it firmly to one of the masts of the ship, in order to ensure the rope remained completely out of the water from ship to shore. Third, a makeshift seat in the form of a life ring with a cloth seat in it, would then be winched out to the ship from the shore. Fourth, each sailor, one by one, would get into the seat, hold on to the life ring, and the life-saving crew on the shore would winch that sailor above the waves all the way from the ship to the shore. And fifth, after that sailor was safely ashore, the crew still on the ship would winch the breech's buoy back out to the ship for the next sailor to climb into. This process was repeated for all of the stranded sailors and passengers on the ship. Here is a close-up of the actual breech's buoy itself. Note that if the ship was too far out, the lifesavers ashore would load their small boat into the surf to row out to the ship to get the crew out that way. However, because this small boat would have to be towed along the beach, in order to effect its use, the stranded ship would have to be close to the life-saving station where the boat was held. And so this was the process Stephen Brownell and all the passengers and crew followed to be rescued that stormy December day, three days before Christmas in 1901. Amazingly, there's a photo of the rescue taking place and showing the breach's buoy in action, after all the passengers and crew were safely ashore, the ship's captain, George Thompson, was the last to leave the ship. Incredibly, also of Bayview, Captain Thompson climbed into the buoy and was winched ashore by the U.S. Life Saving Service team. At the time, George Thompson lived at 447 East Lincoln Avenue in Bayview, with his wife and their two young children. See Captain Thompson's biography in a later episode. In sum, this was a truly amazing event. Two Bayview neighbours on the same ship, in the same dramatic rescue, using the legendary breeches buoy that saved both of their lives on the other side of Lake Michigan. And we have an actual photo of the real event in progress. Perhaps just as amazing is that each man once had even lived in the same Bayview house at 447 East Lincoln Avenue, though at different times, five years apart. 
East Lincoln Avenue was Bayview's ship captain's row in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. This rescue is a great part of Bayview's extensive and substantial maritime history. The second life-threatening adventure for Captain Stephen Brownell on the lakes also involved, oddly enough, another fellow Bayview Lake captain and neighbour. It happened on the night of 15th of August, 1916, at 2.20 a.m. in a dense fog, when the ship Stephen Brownell was captain of, the steamship Topeka, collided in the Detroit River with the steamer Christopher, captained by another Bayview captain, William E. Wright. At the time of the accident, Captain Wright lived at 2761 South Logan Avenue. Captain Stephen Brownell had just left Bayview for Walker's Point about six months earlier, after being a Bayview resident for nearly 25 years. The Topeka, with Stephen's brother David, also aboard, serving as his first mate, sank almost immediately. Despite the early morning hour, when everyone was asleep in their bunks, all the crew and passengers on the Topeka successfully escaped, due to the frantic loud barking by the Topeka's little dog mascot, who ran barking in front of everyone's interior cabin doors, right after the collision. Instilled with a sense of urgency by the dog, everybody made it out, just before the ship went under. But not the dog, who was desperately searched for, soon after, by the Topeka's crew, unfortunately to no avail. Later, Captain Wright stated, when he threw over a ladder to the sinking Topeka, Stephen and David Brownell were the first to clamber up it in front of their crew and passengers. Stephen denied this. The next year, the inquiry into the accident found Wright negligent, and two weeks later he resigned and left Bayview to go raise cattle on his ranch in Las Vegas. The accident also likely had an adverse effect on Captain Stephen Brownell, who isn't documented afterwards to have received another ship to captain, and died just two and a half years later. See a later episode on Captain William E. Wright, and also another later episode providing a more detailed account of the Topeka's heroic dog mascot that saved everyone's life on the Topeka that night. This channel plans to include the dog as a sculpture to complement a historic marker containing all of Bayview's lake captain's names, addresses, and ships captained. This marker and the dog mascot sculpture will be sought to mark this important maritime history of Bayview, and to accompany an application to create a new Bayview Lake Captain's Historic District, the first one of its kind in the USA. Four years after he arrived in Bayview, Stephen Brownell married Miss Mary E. Duke on 24th November 1896. They had three sons, Benjamin, John and James, and two daughters, Mary and Maud. Stephen and Mary remained married for twenty-two years, until he died in 1918, aged sixty-five. After his death, wife Mary moved to various locations in Milwaukee, last seen in 1949, living with daughter Maud. Mary died in 1953, aged eighty-five, and is buried in Valhalla Memorial Park. Captain Stephen Brownell was active with his brothers in the local Milwaukee Lodge No. 6 of the International Shipmasters Association. He is buried in Milwaukee's Holy Cross Cemetery. Thanks for watching. This photograph isn't about Bayview or its lake captains, but it's from the same era of Great Lakes maritime history. We thought we'd close with it for enjoyment, as it captures the spirit of the era. I'm Simon Stanhope, narrator for these episodes. Join us again soon for the next chapter of Bayview, Town of Lake Captains.